against, let's say, uh, defense or you know, another agency that is outside of the networks, you know, controlled by Department of Justice. What you're talking about is a team sport, yeah. and that's why everybody's up here. Uh, the FBI leads the National Cyber Investigative uh, uh, Task Force uh, for that reason. Everybody here just about is at that table plus, you know, and it's a team sport, divide and conquer. Everybody has, everybody's a censor today. So when you're attacked, you got to gather the information from all the different sensors and analyze it. And, you know, it's a, definitely a team sport today. The people in the individual agencies that are law enforcement officers, like I was at NASA or when I was with the NCIS or the Defense Criminal Investigative Service, we're supposed to have vast vertical knowledge of what's going on in that department because that's something the FBI just can't have. They've got too many things to do uh, going laterally across the U.S. nation's uh, law enforcement effort. So when you combine these vertical and lateral approaches, you hopefully get the type of team support you need to get things done. And that's what we try to do. This question is for the two NASA gentlemen on the on the panel. Um, I've worked on a lot of DOD networks, and and I know that it's really difficult in the NASA organization based on the uh, uh, leadership style of NASA, different from the other DOD uh, networks. And uh, I was wondering if you could speak to maybe two different uh, items. One is on an enterprise level, how do you? Uh, protect the uh, individual machines because we know that the border is as safe as it can be but most of the users are inviting the bad guys in and so how do you detect uh, the individual machines on the uh, downside end and what kind of tools are you going to put in and what do you think the next best thing uh, coming out of NIST will be to help with that? Well, I'll let John answer what's going on at NASA presently and I'll be glad to add a historical perspective after that. Um, with regard to the, the approach with NASA, first of all, NASA has uh, several missions. The uh, human space flight mission, I'm proud to report so far, knock on wood, uh, is pretty locked down. The science mission, on the other hand, by statute, is required to share data with the public. And they do that through a, a, an extensive association with the educational institutions, not just in the U.S., but across the globe. So the attack surface for NASA is significantly higher than many of your uh, U.S. agencies. Uh, that's not an excuse that, that it is what it is. Uh, and also gives us a lot of business, uh, quite frankly. Um, but as far as uh, the approach for uh, locking down the networks, I mean, we're, the, the agency is trying to do what everyone else is doing, a defense in depth approach, which is the only way it's gonna work. Um, I'm, hopefully that, that answered your question. I was wondering if there was any enterprise tools that you were going to be introducing to, to help you with that. Uh, the, the CIO's office, which I can't speak for directly, is deploying various tools for an enterprise-wide approach. Can't endorse anything here. Um, yeah, there was an article, uh, I think a, a couple months ago, um, from a Canadian university that identified a covert channels, um, I guess hacking the Indian, Indian, Indian Ministry of Defense for a number of years. Um, my question to you guys is that are there um, like contacts, uh, you know, who would we start with on, on your guys' side um, to communicate if we thought there was some kind of a covert channel going on from our company um, to kind of start that process for identifying if in fact that, you know, is the case. Um, and, you know, how, there was another, I, I went to a, a security event where they, um, the, the presenter was a, was a private com a security company that said there was upwards of 80% of the corporations out there had some kind of a root kit uh, in them um, and that you know these kind of channels are quite common and whether or not they're being used is, is the other thing you know they might not be used. Uh, the best thing to do if you want to report it is get to know your friendly neighborhood FBI agent and uh, bring that to them so you can so start, with start with the FBI start with the FBI or any of the, any people on the panel. I mean, if the company's affiliated with doing defense contractor absolutely. work, they want to talk, and if it's the Air Force work, talk to the Air Force right. OSI. If it's NASA work, talk to NASA. NASA. There's a lot of places they can go. It just depends upon, if it's a pure commercial business and commercial fraud, right. commercial issue involved, the FBI would be most likely your uh, best, best call on that. And do you guys see that or work with those people, um, those kind of, you know, events? Um, do you actually time. see that happen? Every day. All Every time. day. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, this is going to be the last question, guys. We're out of time. So I'll make it very down. short. 
Thank you. Um, most likely it's more directed toward DHS, but um, uh, I want to have your viewpoint and opinion on this. With the critical importance of the net, I understand the argument to network shaping and traffic control of ISPs and the government uh, influence in that. Um, but uh, in lieu of protection of the First Amendment rights and equal access to the network, as it's so important to our lives, what is your response to network neutrality uh, considering that P2P is under scrutiny and now that P2P is actually being used by commercial vendors. Um, and also the issue brought to light uh, by the Shadow Factory. It's a book that talks I, a lot I about I suffer things. from ADD. Can you like shorten that up? Okay. <laughs> What's your, we have trouble hearing you. If you speak up and make it shorter because we're living on Sorry time. about that. Just give us a quick question because we're short on time. What is your viewpoint on net neutrality? Well, I'm an old timer and I was brought up on the internet and command line Unix way back working cybercrime cases, you know, 7980 time frame. So I kind of believe in the old internet, personally speaking for myself. I like it. I don't like all this regulatory oversight, uh, uh, personally speaking. I'm retired, yeah. I can say any fucking thing I want to. Thank you. And I mean, the real problem you have in this country is, it's very interesting, we live in a constitutional republic, but we have vast laws that criminalize just about everything. And so you've got this conflict between openness versus security in, a, in democracy, and it's a difficult issue. Thank you. I, I want to encourage everyone up there, because I understand your difficult jobs, but to press forward with net neutrality, because honestly, that's the way we're going to make U.S. stay the U.S. Okay, guys, thanks a lot. Don't forget, we have another Meet the Fed panel on policy uh, at 1 o'clock right here. Uh, we do have a couple of bullshit flags left. Okay, and also, we're going to take these fine folks right across the hall to room 111, so if you were online and did not get your question answered, they will be able to do it over there. And please exit to the right. There you go.